Hello and welcome to this service for Mothering Sunday. Um, it's uh, lovely to welcome you to join us online this week. Historically, Mothering Sunday was a day when people returned to their mother church for a special service of celebration, but sadly that's not something we're able to do as things stand at the moment. By the 18th century, Mothering Sunday was a specific Sunday in Lent, just a few weeks before Easter, when domestic servants were given a day off so that they could go and visit their families and also visit their mother church. However, by the time of the, second, the First World War, this tradition had largely fallen away. And a lady called Constance Penswick Smith brought in the idea of a specific Mother's Day uh, and Mothering Sunday to tie in with it. So that's relatively a modern invention. You'll see on the wall behind me there's a net of lights. This is the second year that we've not been able to gather as a church family to celebrate together. And of course, so many of us have been unable to join with our own families to um, spend time together. And as human beings, we're social animals, aren't we? We need that human contact and human interaction. And one of the things that I've missed most is the um, warmth of human touch, which is only just being reintroduced into uh, care homes locally. So a moment of quiet, just to think of those people who we are not able to be with today, that we long to spend time with, some of whom we won't meet again in this life. And we're going to listen to a piece of music uh, from John Rutter, beautiful anthem, For the Beauty of the Earth.
As this is a service where we would usually uh, involve our families and young children, this is going to be a slightly more interactive service, which you might think is a bit difficult when we're apart from one another. Um, but I think it is something you can do even if you are on your own today, thinking about such uh, things that we're going to talk about, about uh, relationships with others, particularly that mothering um, and nurturing relationship. So what you will need for this service, if you are able, is two pieces of paper, backs of two envelopes, whatever, uh, one with a happy smiley face on it, and one with a sad face on it. You'll need these several times within the service, so uh, you might want to just pause this now to uh, go and find a piece of paper that you can turn into these two different faces. Thank you. So as we come before God this morning, we come with burdens on our hearts. And we ask for God's forgiveness, knowing that we have a loving and forgiving God, who, if we just bring our shortcomings to him, will forgive us. This is our time of confession. So after each statement, perhaps you'd just like to um, follow it with uh, the statement, we seek God's forgiveness. So Father God, we come before you now. There are things that happen which bring pain upon the people who care for us. And sometimes we have been responsible for those things. Father, we seek your forgiveness. There are things that we have done that cause pain and upset for those who care for us. Father God, we ask your forgiveness. We remember that there are things that we have done which cause despair for the people who care for us. Father God, we seek your forgiveness. And Father God, there are times when we fail and that causes sadness for those who care for us. We seek your forgiveness. Amen. A reading from Exodus chapter 2. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman and, became, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was fine, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him, coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered, and the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, 
she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So this story from Exodus chapter 2 is a story of a community working together to rescue Moses from death and to give him life. The story is of the Israelites who were slaves and oppressed by Egyptian masters who feared the Israelite people. The Egyptians exploited them and made them work without any pay. Pharaoh also ordered all the Hebrew boy children to be killed. This was how Moses ended up in a basket in the bulrushes to be found by an Egyptian princess. Moses' mum did the best she could for him. When she could no longer protect him and hide him, so she entrusts him to the river. But a, 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 another person was moved by compassion and care for this child, the Egyptian princess, who technically was an enemy to the Israelites. But she was led to act out of her culture and she sees the baby and her heart breaks. He was crying and she acts out of love towards him. Just note who else was involved. His sister keeps a watchful eye on him while he is waiting to be found. And she very cleverly enlisted her own mother in helping to bring up the child. And so the Egyptian princess named him Moses, which means I drew him out of the water. Moses had been rescued from certain death. The Nile was full of crocodiles. And he was looked after by the people who loved him. His mother looked after him. And then he was accepted into Pharaoh's family. And he was given all the education and all that he needed to grow up to in the future be the person who would lead the Israelites out of Egypt. This story outlines the care and love of mothers for their children and the care that the church has for us. So this is your moment to interact now with the story and this is when you need your happy face and your sad face. Firstly, I want you to have a think about and maybe jot down either around the smiley face or on the back of the sheet of paper, all those people who care about you, who support you, who nurture you. They may be younger than you. They may be older than you. They may be part of your peer group, your age group. But give that some thought and then have a think about the things which worry you about your current situation and put those around this uh, face image. So I'm going to give you one minute now, not a huge amount of time I know, but people who care for you, who look out for you, who nurture you, and the things that you're worried about. Okay, over to you.
Well done. For some of you, that minute would have been a long time. For others, you may still be scribbling wildly on your pieces of paper. But uh, you may wish to continue adding to them as we listen to a beautiful piece of music. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Okay, now, um, if you're one of the younger people here, you may wish to extend beyond the room that you're sitting in uh, on this search, um, but I'm going to ask you to go on a hunt in your house. Um, if you are uh, settled in your armchair with a nice cup of coffee and a biscuit for this service, then all you need to do, I think, is probably just look around the room that you are in. I want you to search for something that you can see which reminds you of somebody who cares for you and that you care about. So it may be that there's a photograph on the wall or maybe there's a card or a letter that you've been sent or maybe there's an object that you've been sent or maybe, if you're really lucky, a bunch of flowers for this Mothering Sunday. But have a little look around. Again, I'm just going to give you a minute to search for something that shows you that somebody cares about you.
my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be. Our second reading this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, and it is uh, early on when Mary and Joseph take their son to the temple. Verse 33 in chapter 2. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your heart and soul too. So for this second part of the story, you're going to need your smiley face and your sad face again. And um, what, we, what you might like to do is to hold them up at various points in the story. So we remember the story of Jesus, how he was born to the world, but born in a rough stable and laid in a feeding trough called a manger. His parents, Father Joseph and Mother Mary, looked after him, and visitors came to see him after his birth and when he was older. Mary and Joseph took their son to the temple to give thanks to God for him, <clears throat> and an old priest called Simeon knew that this baby was special. He was the promised son of God. Simeon said to his parents, who really cared for Jesus, that he was special and that many people would be challenged and changed by him. But then Simeon said that Mary's heart would be hurt too. Mary cared for Jesus, and she and Joseph had no idea what Simeon meant. They were amazed by his words, but a little scared by them too. The Bible tells us that after this, Jesus was in danger, and Joseph was warned in a dream to travel to safety somewhere else. Joseph Mary and their precious son were refugees traveling to another country to try to find safety. We know that Mary really cared for her son, but she saw what he suffered and went through, even standing and watching Jesus die on a cross. Those who care for us, like our mothers, our carers, and lots of others, would love to see us safe and happy, but know that life isn't always like that. When we have sad times and difficult times, they suffer too. They feel our pain and our upset. Just like when things are going well, they can share our joy just like Jesus, his mother, Mary, those who care for us know how we feel in good times and in tough times. And Jesus knows how we feel too. So you've already put some writing onto your happy face and your sad face. And maybe what you've heard from the story of Jesus and from the story of Moses 
is going to help you think about others who are part of your life, who are caring for you, who feel your pain when you are sad, who want to share in your joy when you are happy. So just take a moment now to uh, add to the things that you've put onto your uh, faces, but also to reflect on the mementos that there are in your room which show just how much people care about you. So as you go ahead through these days, as we begin to um, open up in our communities, uh, let's return to these happy and sad faces and think about what you might be able to amend and change. We're going to listen to some music now. Give thanks with a grateful heart. come now to our time of prayer this morning. We remember that our God is ready, willing and able to comfort us through all our pain and our suffering. And we remember that we are all God's children. 
So when I say that phrase, we are all God's children, would you respond with, help us grow in love? We are all God's children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, on this Mothering Sunday, we pray for all who are persecuted for their faith and all those for whom following you brings them into danger. We pray for those who are exploring faith or who are new to the faith. And we pray for those who have turned away from you and no longer walk your way. We thank you for the example of so many who have shared our lives and drawn us closer to you. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, when we think of Mary and Joseph leaving after the birth of Jesus for Egypt, we pray for those who are forced to leave their homes, who are forced to leave their countries and all their family members behind. We pray, pray particularly for the refugee families who live near us in our community in Poole. We pray for the many across the world whose lives are blighted by war and by famine. Those who must watch their children die for lack of food. We pray for your peace and comfort for each one. We remember that we are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, we thank you for the mothering, for the nurturing, for the caring that goes on in this community here at St. Clement's, here in Newtown and Alderney. We pray for those who crave some tenderness, some human touch. And we pray for all those of us who are really struggling to stay strong. We are all your children. Help us to grow in love. Loving Father, we pray for new parents and for their babies, for all women giving birth today. We pray for all those who are vulnerable, that they might be protected from harm. And we remember that we are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, there are those here whose mothers have died, whose mothers are still remembered with great affection and love. We pray for all those who have nurtured us in whatever role and rejoice in all that they gave to us. We commend each one to your protection now and forever. We are all your children. Help us to grow in love. Loving Father, we give you thanks for the comfort you provide in all our troubles and challenges and for the richness of all our relationships. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's join our prayers and praises together in saying the Lord's Prayer, using the traditional words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as we come towards the end of our service, we're going to give thanks to God again by singing. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices for wondrous things he's done and in his world rejoices. So as we go out into this world today, remembering that we are deeply and wonderfully loved, and as we continue on our walk through Lent towards the cross, may we rejoice in the majesty of the Father in whose light we walk. May we rejoice in the compassion of the Son His love is the way that we walk. May we be empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit as we walk towards the cross. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with each one of you and all those that you care about and who care about you today and always. Amen.
go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.